Hey there, my name is Jay with CompuMatter and the purpose of this video is to set up a mesh network uh, from my office. I'm going to be taking it to a client's location. I want to set up the, um, the what's called the CAP, uh, that, which is the central access point. It can be any of the devices as long as it can communicate wirelessly to the next hop. But the first one, the CAP, needs to be wired. And for that, we are going to use the GWN7625 mounted to a wall, which is going to send a signal to the next device and on down the line. All right, to start things off, this is going to be my base unit. I'm going to attach this to a, a wall in this way, and it's going to transmit the signal to the second device, which will be mounted further on down the line, and transmit the signal over a field. Um, both of them are plugged into my PoE network uh, and giving them power. So we're going to find this one and log into it first. So to start with, we need to find the IP address of that device. And I believe we have it right here, this 9.250. Okay, that was accurate. And now we will enter in the uh, username and password. Okay, so I have found that the password is on the bottom of the device, and it's actually, the what it says is the Wi-Fi password is the same password that's used with the admin login to go ahead and log in. I will choose the setup wizard, which I think is just gonna put me on a DHCP network. Okay, it shows me the current IP address. It is the master, and I imagine the master slave, they're talking about the cap device versus other repeaters. That's probably what's going on here. I'll say next. Now this is what I want the wireless to be. I know that's an odd one, but that's the client situation. And the password. And that is essentially it. We'll complete. So it's bringing up a lot of services on the device. That went away on its own and it refreshed the dashboard on its own. If I click on SSIDs, I can see that we have the capability of adding multiple SSIDs. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to configuration and I'm gonna ask it to discover other access points. Okay, it immediately discovered this other access point, which was the 7600 long range. It does let us know that it cannot, if we have any access points with firmware lower than that, it's not going to find them. We can see up here the firmware on this device is 1.023, and evidently the other one is, well, here it is right here, 1.019. So we'll probably upgrade that uh, firmware, but right now it's doing what it needs to do. I will link the selected device. All right, we'll close that. Okay, so you'll notice initially that said offline. Uh, it evidently was provisioning the device in the background and uh, needed to go through some steps, but it didn't take long, maybe 15 seconds. Now, for the record, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier we could create multiple SSIDs. We can also determine here which devices are going to be on which SSDs. So by selecting those, they would automatically be a part of that SSID. We'll go ahead and save that. Apply it. Now I get an opportunity to name these devices. Call that primary cap. Upstairs. Because that's where the internet connection comes in on this particular client. And then uh, we'll actually we'll mount this on a pole. And we'll even help a little, you know, we could name that all kinds of ways to help us locate it in the future. Another way to do that would be just to number these one through whatever and have a legend somewhere on your own infrastructure so you would know how to help that client. Okay, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the firmware, which is under system maintenance. The address that's in there by default is wrong. In order to get the right address for, the, for this particular model and its firmware, you need to go to 
this URL, find your model, find the associated URL to upgrade your firmware and plug it in. And I've got this set to HTTP by default. Failed. Okay, so there was a trick to that. I had to put the URL in there and then I had to save at the bottom here. And only after it was saved could I then upgrade it and not get errored out. All right, at some point it says it's going to reboot. All right, that did take a couple of minutes. Log back in. I don't need that anymore, so we'll close that. This came up by default, went away, reloaded the dashboard. Okay, so really that's all there is to it. This particular access point, because it's not a router, it doesn't, this doesn't have a lot of features. You basically, uh, it gets connected to whatever you plug it into. It gets an IP address. It has the internet. It then um, spawns that internet over to every repeater that is attached to it. And that's fine. It, it ends up being a very simple and quick way to get the job done in this particular case. So I'm going to click on the uh, network down here. You can see we do have one called the dog farm. I'm going to uh, try that on my phone. I'm going to shut off my uh, cellular. And it does show up here. It's asking for the password. Joining. Joined up right away. Now let's see if I can go anywhere. We are on the dog farm network and in fact, I'm going to take a look at what our speeds are. Yeah, good down. Yeah, we're 542 down and uh, 200 up and counting. So, respectable speeds, 215 up. Okay, I missed something that is going to be important. Under system, under mesh, you need to click the enable mesh button. And when you do, it's going to take about 30 seconds after the save for it to configure itself. Okay, and something else that's going to be a value is under access point and configuration. It turns out there's no way to, I thought I was going to be able to log into this other access point and upgrade its firmware. It turns out once you have made a slave of a device, you can no longer access that device via its admin page. That's very important. Uh, the only way you can do it is to reset the device completely or you can unlink it here, delete the paired device, then you'll be able to log into it, then you'll have to adopt it again afterwards. But I think that by selecting um, the checkbox next to any or all of your devices, you can upgrade the firmware all at one time. Let's see, it will be upgraded, proceed, excluding them, so the master will not be. Uh, device will automatically execute factory reset. When degrade, okay, that's fine. So, at this point, it's presumably upgrading the other device. Let's have a look. We're currently at 1.019. Okay, so I think you can wait forever for this upgrading page to finish. Once it starts that process, it never ends. So I opened up in another browser. Oh, isn't that funny now, just as I said that. Now I want to point out, just so you know when you run into this on your own, that this one that says offline had a green light when I just looked at the AP a little while ago, which my research tells me it means a successful up, uh, update of the firmware had just been done, which coincides with what we're doing here. Ah, and then it switched to a blue light, um, and it was still another 30 seconds or so before we got the online here. But it is online, and the firmware is upgraded to the same version that we have above it. Offline again. It may be going through successive reboots. That's a possibility. Oh, no, we're online. We just needed to refresh the dash. Now, I have also heard that if your access points are in close enough proximity to each other, you want to make sure that they are on different channels. And here we have uh, channel 11 for the 2.4 versus 1 and channel 157 versus 44. So if those are not the same. There shouldn't be any conflict. 
So that is it. You can see behind me here, we've got one client. So that shows the, uh, the cell phone. Yeah. And it does it show us what AP uh, access point primary. So it shows us which one we're logged into as, uh, as well. All right. I wanted to give you a little feedback. I went out to the property and installed these two devices. Um, this is the main building and upstairs is where the uh, 7625 GWN device was installed. The only goal for that device really was to punch the signal from the upstairs of the building to the outside front of the building where we're hanging the uh, GWN 7600 long range. And so it's downstairs uh, out in front of the building and its goal in life was to punch across to this outbuilding right here. And probably looking at, um, it's hard to tell here as far as the sense of scale goes, but I would estimate that to be about 200 feet away. Uh, the device is supposed to reach uh, over 300 feet, I think. Um, so it shouldn't have been a problem. The fact is I was able to effectively search uh, the internet, surf the internet all the way down where you see this orange line go, which was probably well in excess of 300 feet because there was nothing in between the two at ground level. So it was just wide open straight to wherever I was. So mission accomplished, happy ending. That's how I did it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to be first on the list of people that see these videos. Bye-bye.